I will not discuss anything about esophageal pressure. But I think there are four fundamentals of protective ventilation. There is energy, its tension, in the size of the lungs, and the time point of the disease process. And all of these factors are actually intertwined. So energy transfer. Energy is quite easy. It's actually tidal pressure change, the driving pressure, times the tidal volume, times the respiratory rate. That's called power too. But I think it's very important to recognize that if you just do it once like that, it doesn't matter. But if you do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it matters. And this energy is used for moving air in and out of the lungs and uh, to overcome resistance that usually dissipates heat in the upper airways and doesn't affect the lung. Then I have a normal tissue deformation, def uh, deformation but in also injuring lung by cyclic opening the AC9 and alveoli, the atelectroma, and overstanding some lung regions, the barrier wall trauma. So what shall it, and you can have more complicated, of course, uh, uh, equations. And I think here is uh, the PEEP also included, but I, I, I think the PEEP could actually reduce the energy transfer too. So I will discuss that later. But how should you do when you protect the ventilated? Of course, you should reduce the energy transfer. And just follow the formula. Oh, reduce driving pressure. We know that if you reduce the driving pressure, you reduce mortality. And the other thing, we know if you follow the other factor, reduce tidal volume, reduce mortality. And about respiratory rate. We don't actually much know about it, but we know that high frequency oscillation is, does not improve, reduce mortality, it increases mortality. And in a, this study is an experimental study from our lab. We show that high frequency or a high rate, this 40, will increase edema formation. But what about PEEP? That was something disgusting. Here I have a pressure volume curve, volume pressure. And if you start with P here, and this is a very stiff lung, uh, and you have a tidal volume here, and you see that that will cause the driving pressure of this level. But when you increase the P, then, and would like to keep the same driving tidal volume, then you have much higher driving pressure. So that may increase uh, injury. On the other hand, if it's a recruitable lung, you have moved this curve up here, then for the same tidal volume, you reduce the driving pressure and you reduce the injury. But in fact, in fact, it's only when PEEP is associated with recruitment, that is lower driving pressure for the same tidal volume, you have a survival benefit you see driving pressure reduced when you increase PEEP, mortality is decreased. But if you don't have this effect, you actually have a tendency to increase mortality. So I come to the second fundament. That is tension. And that has been discussed a long time ago by 1678 Robert Hooke wrote this study about springs. And he found the amount by which a spring is deformed is the strain. It's linearly related to the force causing the deformation that's stress. And tension is actually stress times strain times stress. And uh, in a spring, you higher tension, you higher damage, and you have a rupture. And if you look here, this is actually a line model by a sketch of Arthur Dubois, 1953, the same year as Lassen and Ibsen published their study about uh, the effect, the survival benefit by positive pressure ventilation of the polymyelitis patients. And they also found at that same time that it prolonged ventilation will cause emphysema 
that is ventilator-induced lung injury. So it was known even 1953. And in fact, this is not a bad model because in the lungs, strain is the same as volume and stress is pressure. It's maybe more fancy to so say strain and stress. But, and that will tension in the wall will increase and uh, with the, the, it's dependent on the transpulmonary pressure times volume and tension is associated with lung injury. And even more increase in the, the fractional increase in tidal tension depends on tidal volume divided by end expiratory volume and the driving pressure divided by the transpulmonary end expiratory volume. And as I said, increased tension, increased lung injury. So what can you do? Reduce the tension. And just go back to the formula. You reduce the tidal volume. We know that reduction of tidal volume reduces mortality. But how much? To six milliliter per kilogram? Or does the volume in AIDS depend on the predicted body weight or the size of the small lung? In fact, if you look here in this study by Terangi and uh, co-workers, you find here if with a lung that is very large collapse and edema, and you have six milliliter per kilogram, you increase the over distension, the red dots. But if you have a very small collapse, you find actually nothing, they tolerate it. But the small lung is, will six milliliter per kilogram will be too much. And therefore, we need to correct the tidal volume for lung volume. And that's also quite easy. It's a long time ago that was published this study that lung volume is actually related to, to compliance. It's a straight line. And we know that tidal volume divided lung volume is associated with ventilator-induced lung injury. So just change lung volume to compliance, then we know that this also related to lung volume. But tidal volume divided by compliance is the same as driving pressure. Therefore, driving pressure must be related to ventilator-induced lung injury. So what you should do is reduce the tidal volume so you get the lower uh, driving pressure, it reduces ventilator-induced lung in injury, and as we know, mortality. But we have another thing too. It's uh, the end inspiratory plateau pressures. Uh, that has been said should be below 30. And if it's very high, you saw the image, uh, the sketch by Arthur Dubois, then you have a rupture. So you get a barotrauma. And if it's uh, high, then of course you increase the tension, the wall tension. And that is associated with lung injury. And we know that increased anti inspiratory plateau pressure is increased mortality. Increased plateau pressure, increased mortality. So reducing plateau pressure is maybe better than reducing driving pressure. That was investigated by this quite famous Spanish and American researchers. One problem was that they didn't recognize this simple formula. Plateau pressure is the same as driving pressure plus PEEP. PEEP is 10 in all patients. Then it must be the plateau pressure is driving pressure plus 10. And in fact, it was 10 in all patients. So when they investigate this, when PEEP is below 10 centimeter water, driving pressure below 20 would give similar outcome in ADS patients as plateau pressure below 30. Just follow this formula. And what did they found? find? Yes. Here. You can see plateau pressure below 30 and driving pressure below 19. They have 19 instead of, instead of 20. It's the same curve, the survival curve. If it's above 30 and it's above 19 here, then you have a low survival. So actually, plateau pressure and driving pressure is the same coin, the two sides of the same coin. 
So now I come to the third fundament, size of the lungs. Because if you increase the size, then you reduce the tidal tension. And that you can do by increasing the effective expiratory lung volume, that is lung recruitment. You cannot, should not do it by distension. And we know that we have in experimental studies, if from our lab here, you can see 72 hours of ARDS net ventilation or 72 hours of open lung ventilation, and you can see the color here in the PET studies are much less when we have the open lung, that is less inflammation. And the study by Amato et al. found that open lung in early phase of ARDS improves survival compared with conventional ventilation. But other studies that have more or less have late and early ARDS couldn't find any survival benefit with the open lung ventilation or with lung recruitment. But what is that? I come to the fourth. It's about time. Because the inflammatory cause in ARDS is like all other inflammation. It starts with edema, then consolidation fibrosis. This starts quite early with consolidation fibrosis. So here you can do recruit the lung, but you cannot do it later. So the first day is possible. Then it's not recruitable, and recruitment maneuver is harmful. And you put this together, of course, you get the neutral the results in a study. But we have other problems also in a ARDS. The stress rises here from one study from our lab, earlier from uh, one of co-workers in our lab that have made an artificial uh, atelectasis and then measure the inflammatory response in the interface or the border between the open lung and the collapsed lung, and it found in higher uh, neutrophil infiltrates and in higher inflammatory uh, uh, cytokines in this region. And furthermore, this is important. The lungs are very inhomogeneous, and therefore stress and strain are homogeneously distributed, and you can see here, you can see that blue is high, low compliance, and red is high compliance. And all you see, it's very, very you know, homogeneously distributed in the lung, and in some regions you have high compliance, and the same region almost, and low compliances. So that is the seven or three million to 700 units that we have, alveolar, that we have in the lung. And we do one thing, mostly at least. We ventilate the lung with via one tube placed into trachea. And you can see that the, all these gases are coming to different parts of the lung. And to say that we have an optimal PEEP, an optimal tidal volume, an optimal driving pressure or transpulmonary pressure is ridiculous. It's always a compromise. But one thing we can do is to change the body position if we do it early. That makes in humanization of the lung. You have this collapse in the lower part in ARDS, early ARDS, due to the wet heavy lung and mediastine and so on, and then you put the patient prone, you get the recruitment, the lung will be humanized, humanized and uh, also ventilation will be more, more equal and uh, you, the, you also get better oxygenation, but this will reduce the injury. And in fact, early treatment with prone positioning reduce mortality. So in summary, when I ventilate, I consider energy, tension, size, and time when I set the ventilator. And this is the way I do it, or should do it. Because in the early edematous phase of ADS, I think that Ola, not Stenqvist, but open lung approach may be advantageous when you have lung recruitment, high P prone positioning. But if you have a little bit later after some days, you should not do it. Use lower peep and don't recruit the lung. 
but in all these cases, you should low, use low tidal volume driving pressure and inspiratory pressure to reduce the tension and the energy transfer to lung. And of course, if nothing works, ECMO is there. Spontaneous breathing I will not discuss, but if you do it carefully, in a smart way, I think it can be used more often than we do today. Thank you.